Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. I'm glad to have you guys here on this January, January the 23rd. It's a Monday, <laughs> 20, uh, 2023. Thank you for tuning in. Now, here's what I want to talk about the surveillance state. I'm going to tell you some things you didn't know. Right. First thing I want to talk about is facial recognition technology. You guys are, are not familiar with this. What the computer does is uh, through any camera, through using this software, and depending on how complex the computer is, the more powerful the computer, the better it is working this software. But even your home desktop can use software now for facial, facial recognition technology. And in a more simplified form, like like this picture up here on the uh, top right, you know. Uh, but then when it gets more complex, there's more, uh, they analyze the picture better, like the, to more detail, like this picture on the right here, uh, which would be a more complex computer with, with faster, uh, faster processing ability. But the more complex it is, the more detailed it is. In other words, if you can see the difference between the first photo I fo showed you and this second photo, how, how detailed the computer can get. But the computer can do this so fast, it can scan thousands of people in a matter of minutes. And it can, say it has a database, it can isolate the person it's looking for. Say it's looking for a criminal, for instance. So it sorts through, and the people that don't match the, the profile, it basically discards searching for that one person that does match that particular profile. It's all math. Your face, what the computer sees is math, and it's looking for the numbers to match. Okay, so but here's what I want to tell you. This same software... This came about in the last 10 years or so. Then allows for facial recognition technology. Also does something for the surveillance state that you're not unaware of. Every cell phone out there, every electronic device can become a listening device. Words, spoken speech, sounds can be translated into text and text can be translated into sounds and it can all be down to a digital algorithm. What the computer sees is ones and zeros. It's called a binary code. But it can do this so fast. The computers, the new computers they have now can crunch numbers so fast that what it can do is it can take this text and it can look for keywords just like the facial recognition technology is not interested in nothing but the specific face that matches those numbers, the same way with words. They can use words the same way. So everything you type on the Internet, everything that you speak into a, a phone that could be listening, and all your phones are actually listening devices now, all your electronics are list can possibly be listening devices. And they are very, very, and everything that you write, everything that you, right now, this transmission, what I'm saying on this internet is being analyzed by computer. Looking for keywords. Now, if it gets enough of those keywords that match a certain data pattern, the computer flags it. Okay, so in your house right now, if you say anything, if your phone is within range, of your audit, auditable voice, those words can be listened to and analyzed by a computer. So if you picture an army of people listening to the things that you're saying, that's not the way it works in the surveillance state. How it works is, is the, computer's, the computer is analyzing Everything everyone is saying around the world. They've only had this technology for a very short period of time, but they have it now. Where they can analyze everything everyone in the whole world is saying, even in their private rooms, if they can hear it. Now that's the key, if they can hear it. Uh, say you got a cell phone that's sitting on the table over there and you're 30 feet away. That's a possible listening device listening to everything that you're saying and those words would be analyzed by computer and looking for keywords within your sentences and if those keywords line up to what the surveillance state is looking for 
In other words, they set what keywords they want the computer to look for. Then they can fur further analyze what you've said or what who, who in your family has said. And so you cannot be assured of any privacy in this modern surveillance state that we have now. There's no privacy anymore for you or your family. The only way you can get privacy in this modern day and age is you'd have to go into a soundproof room with no electronics. You'd have to make sure that all electronics are removed. It would have to be a soundproof room. And you'd have to talk in whispers if you want any privacy. But this is just where it's beginning. Because as these computers become more powerful, your brain operates on frequencies. And in fact, these are called brain waves. And these are a... a uh, and now, right now, I'm talking about what's going to happen in the future. So we're just entering into this technology. But what will happen in the future is your brain's put off something called brain waves. And these are actually a, uh, a radio wave. And it's measured in hertz. And, you know, a lot of the radio waves you're familiar with, like, uh, say, AM, amp amplitude modulation... FM frequency modulation, these different radio waves are in a higher bandwidth frequency than brain waves. Brain waves are down. See, there's megahertz and then there's hertz. And brain wave frequencies run like, I think it's between, if I remember properly, I think it's between like 2 hertz and like 12 hertz or something like that. A very low frequency. They're called extremely low frequency, ELF frequency range, but they're radio waves. And they don't stay inside your head. They travel outwards from you. Some quite some distance too. All it is is a matter of time before the surveillance state gets the technology to be able to pick up these frequency waves from your brain and they can even the computer can even analyze your brain frequencies. So it's just a matter of time, probably fifteen, maybe even ten years into the future. And they'll be able to even know what you're thinking. The computer will analyze your thoughts. But we're not there yet. They don't have that technology yet, but it's coming. But as of now, they can analyze any verbal communication, your words, what you speak. They can analyze anything that you type on the Internet. Anything that you say on the Internet, is it's all analyzed by computer. And then it's flagged. And what the flagging operation is about is when you say the things that they believe that you're not supposed to say, then they flag that. The computer flags it. And then they come in for further analysis by a, per a real person. The flag communications. So we're all being watched all the time. And we can't avoid that watching. The only way you can avoid that watching is maybe if you had some sort of an underground bunker or something, so you're underneath the ground, so, so that, and you had no electronics whatsoever, <laughs> which is pretty hard to do, or a soundproof room with no electronics inside it. Or maybe if you went way out in the middle of the woods someplace and left your cell phone back at home, then you're what's called off-grid, and they don't know what you're saying or what you're doing. But that nowadays, you get no privacy anymore because of the surveillance state. And soon, they're planning on bringing out the new money, the central bank digital currency, so they'll be able to see what you're spending in every place that you're spending it as well. So as we have entered into this modern age, we've entered into... A, we're entering into a dystopian type society where personal freedom is going to be lost. It's going to be only the state. And so I, I, I'm going to tell you guys what. Uh, that might not be such a bad thing, you know. Uh, the, if, if we didn't have all of these bad actors in, in positions of power. And so we're in a terrible situation here because we have... The, the, the real criminals within society are the ones at the top. They're the worst ones of the bunch, you know. And they can actually see 
everything that's going on out there. You have no privacy in this world anymore because of the electronics that are, are put in. So, you know, I mean, if you want privacy again, say, well, Glenn, how do we get privacy again? Well, what you do is you buy yourself a small place out in the country, someplace, and you cut off all electronics. And then you'll have somewhat uh, a somewhat amount of privacy. But the problem is with the surveillance state, if you do that, they're going to say, we don't know anything about this person anymore. He's moved off grid. Let's, let's, let's uh, analyze him the old-fashioned way. <laughs> Seriously, you know? Uh, the old-fashioned way they used to analyze people is they used to make a dossier on you. So there's really no way out of this. The only anim anonymity that you have is the fact that there's so many individuals around the world, 8 billion people, that they have to analyze on a continuous basis. But their computers can do that. Now that we're moving into the age of supercomputers, it's not a big problem. Control. Control, control is what it all, it's all about. And it's actually sad because humanity used to be free. Now we're under this control grid. It's electronic control grid. And it's really not fair to humanity. So anyway, and I had to have this little rant with you guys and talk to you guys because you got a lot of you guys are probably not aware that every word you say, even when you're in the toilet, if you got your cell phone on you, it's more than likely being analyzed and listened to by computer. And then the computer is a servant of a of these the surveillance state, Big Brother. And if you didn't know that, I'm bringing you up to date on it real quick. Now, the next thing I want to talk about, and I've been saying this for a long time, uh, have you ever seen such a smash down in silver? Down a dollar nine today. And you know, I've been saying this for a long time. Now, you, you know the big bullion banks have manipulation over the silver market. Total manipulation over the silver market. I've been saying for a long time that they're going to do one final big smash down in the future. Now, I've been saying this for years, and you guys have watched my channel and know I've been saying this, that they might be planning some final big smash down, and then they're going to buy up all the physical. Because bankers and all these big rich mucky mucks, they're greedy. They don't want to pay what you pay for silver. You you pay the premium and you pay all the 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 stuff to get the silver, you know, and you they want to get the lowest price possible for themselves and their buddies. And they because they control this through manipulation of the silver price, it doesn't matter that there's not enough silver to go around out there. You know, generally supply and demand, if there's no supply, generally price goes up on things. They can manipulate the price to the downside even though there's none available hardly. It's a scarce commodity. It doesn't matter. And this might be what they're doing today. Well, you say, well, why would they manipulate the price to the downside? So them and their buddies can scoop up all the real metal that's left and get it at the cheapest price possible so that they can make the highest profit margin or highest profit ratio when they decide to sell it. They want... These guys, they don't look at anything unless they can get like a 10-bagger. And you know what? They, that's what they talk amongst themselves. They say, oh, we want to get a 10-bagger. You know what that means? That means they want to take 10 times their money. 10 times. They want to make a profit. Not 100% profit. It's not good enough for them. That's peasily to them. It's like, they want at least like 10,000% profit and stuff like that. That's what they want. You know, they're very, very greedy. This is how they got rich. They got rich on the backs of all of you guys. And so if they're interested in silver, they can manipulate the price down and then scoop up all the real physical metal at these low prices. Right? When the price and they use computers to buy. And so they can they can knock the price down and when it's at its lowest point, the lowest pulse, they can buy up a whole bunch of physical. And then all of a sudden they can scoop it right up from underneath you guys. They got the, they, it's a, these guys are uh, rackets. They're racketeers. 
is what they are. That's, and they're all in it together against you guys. The common ordinary man. So you can never get ahead. You're their slave. And they're going to continue to keep you as their slave. So I'm sitting here and I'm watching this and I'm saying today, well, why is the price of silver going down so much? I know silver was in the channel for about the last six weeks. A very narrow band. Okay? And generally, in a narrow band like that, it's going to break out either to the downside or to the upside. Right? But there's no reason for it to break out to the downside so severely as it's doing today, with all the other markets fairly relatively stable. And the big question mark is why? And it's, it's, it's caught my interest. What's going on here with this? Caught my interest. I say to myself, hey, you know, what are they doing? How do they knock it down? A dollar nine. Now it's down 97 cents. Well, I can just see it. They knocked it down right when it hit that bottom pin right there. They're coming in buying up some physical for themselves. That's what I think they're doing. The big shots. They might have just put in a, a $10 million order for physical or $20 million, and then all of a sudden the price goes back up a little bit, right? You know, and meanwhile, they got their warehouse ready. And they know what's going to happen in the future. There's going to be a big shortage of the real physical metal. Da, 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 da. You know, and the price is going to, they're going to get their 10 bagger that they've been interested in. These guys like J.P. Morgan's got their warehouses all full of silver and these bankers, and they've putting it away for themselves because they know. They, they're not, look, guys, they're not going to store that stuff away and have to have armed guards and everything else and, and store it away for years and everything not to make at least a 10-bagger. But they don't want you in on it. They don't like it when you buy silver and put it away for yourself. They want you to be invested in the dollar, which they know in the end is going to go to zero. You know, I mean, come on, it's it's all the world is turning into a racket. Okay, uh, ten forty-two for crypto. We're looking at twenty-two thousand eight hundred ninety-five uh, for crypt Bitcoin today, and Ethereum's at sixteen twenty-three. Uh, I took it as a bad signal the other day. The fact that Bitcoin's going up and the altcoins aren't. And the altcoin, some of the money from the altcoins being transferred into Bitcoin. Generally, that's a signal that the market's nervous. And I think this market is nervous. And you got to understand something. Even though Bitcoin is starting to rally a little bit, be very, very cautious. And why I'm going to tell you to be cautious about this is because the stock market is on the edge. The the uh, all of this. Uh, Quantitative tightening and uh, uh, the, the whole thing has been draining liquidity out of the system, the Fed. And the, uh, the fact that they've been uh, raising interest rates and everything, you know, uh, even a slight raise of interest rates now at this point uh, can shut off uh, fractional reserve lending. And that's the biggest money multiplier out there. And so you have to understand something that liquidity, the system has to run on liquidity. It's like your body runs on blood. Well, liquidity, or, which is money in the system, is like the blood of the system. And the Fed has been draining the blood of this corpse. And now it's getting to the point now where the corpse could have a sudden cardiac arrest. In other words, the system could just, certain entities within the system, could just run out of money suddenly and cause a spiraling effect of disinflation that could actually lead to deflation. The monster could come out of the cage for a very short period of time, and there would be a reaction to that. They're not going to allow that to happen for very long. And what's the reaction? The reaction is the Fed's going to change, and they're going to turn 180 degrees and start to support the system again. Well, that means massive inflation at this point if they do that. But what we could actually go through is before we get to that inflation, we could go through a short period of disinflation or deflation even. Most likely disinflation. A short period of it. So you have to prepare for that. And Bitcoin would be, uh, it would just hammer Bitcoin if that happens, you know. Uh, and so it's why I say you got to be a little bit careful because we could be right on the edge of that happening, of the of of everything starting to cave in on itself because of what the Fed's been doing for the last number of months, 
Uh, okay. 33,619 for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. It's up 243 points on the day. And if we take a look now at the S&P 500, we're looking at 4,012. It's up 39 points on the day so far. Let's take a look at oil. Crude oil is 81.86. It's up 22 cents. So it's cracked $80. Now it's heading toward $82. This is going to translate into a little bit higher prices at the pump for you guys now at this point. Uh, because it's been creeping up. It was in the 70s. Now it's in the 80s. Creeping back up there again on crude. Now let's take a look at the U.S. dollar index. U.S. 10 years at 3.5. It's up 2.4 basis points. And the U.S. 30 years at 3.68. And it's up 2. Point, it 2.6 basis points. And if we look overall, what we see here is we see massive yield curve inversions. Uh, you know, I mean... All the way out uh, to uh, the uh, U.S. Uh, one month, 4.5%. And you're looking at a U.S. 30 year at 3.6%. <laughs> Negative correlation. I'm going to tell you guys what. You got this... The rate of inflation, take the rate of inflation, take the yield on these bonds and stuff, and they're not a good purchase anymore. In fact, and, and in fact, they're losing. They're, they're, the new bonds come out, the yields rise. Not a good time to buy bonds, you know. Uh, they're not the safe haven people think they are. And in fact, they're tied to the U.S. debt, and the U.S. debt is basically like buying stock, it's the same thing as buying stock in a bankrupt corporation. In fact, a corporation that can never get their head above water. That's only going to go deeper and deeper into debt. And if that sounds like a good deal, then these are a good deal. Because the U.S. Is, as a corporate entity, they are in the red. And they're getting deeper and deeper in the red all the time. And you're buying stock. Basically, this is stock in that corporation. And I know that this can never go bankrupt because they can always start up the printing press and just keep this thing going. It's called the debt limit or debt ceiling. And they're approaching it now. And, and you know what they're going to do in the end. When it starts to get down to the nitty-gritty, they're going to form a new debt deal and they're going to go deeper in debt. Uh, it goes to $30 trillion and the next thing goes to $40 trillion in debt. And this is how we go, you know, and just deeper and deeper and deeper. But... There comes a point where they can't kick the can down the road. They're going to destroy the currency in the end. And these are becoming negatively correlated. So, I mean, if you take a look at... It's starting to switch where people are starting to look at gold and silver as something that's, that's a different correlation to the stock market and to bonds. And money's been flowing into the stock market and bonds... But at a certain point, investors, they, they look at the bottom line. And when the time, certain time comes where bonds and stock market don't look so attractive as gold and silver, they'll go after gold and silver. And, they'll, and what about allocation? You see, here's what's been the big problem for gold and silver is the fact that it exists in the real world. It's not a financial asset that's just digits. And to really get the true advantage out of gold and silver, you have to take allocation. Allocation is a huge problem for investors. It's not a problem for the ordinary guy. You know, he goes into the coin store and he buys a few ounces of silver and puts it away for himself and it's no big deal. But a big-time investor, this is why they stay out of the market is because it is a big deal. Allocation. Allocation means taking possession of it and taking it and putting it away for yourself. Well, if you're a big time investor and you got billions of dollars to invest, you can't invest in silver because it'd be dump truckloads of silver and then where are you going to put it? And who's going to watch it? And who's going to keep it from getting stolen? That's the allocation problem. But there comes a certain point where it becomes such an attractive asset class that they will solve the allocation problem. 
And when that point comes, you ain't going to get any gold and silver any longer. End of story. End of story, guys. Okay, look. Uh, let's move on. Let's take a look at the U.S. dollar index at 102.09. Uh, and uh, it looks like it's going up right now a little bit, but it's starting to turn back down a little bit. Uh, and we're going to finish off with, uh, well, that's the finish. That's the finish line <laughs> for the show for today. Uh, next weekend, so next, next Sunday, I'm going to tell more of the story. <laughs> I'm glad you guys liked it. Uh, anyway, you guys have a nice afternoon, and uh, we'll catch you guys in the next episode, and you guys have a great day. Bye-bye.